Hello Java developers and welcome to another video on building serverless applications on AWS with Java. In this video, you're going to learn about something super, super, super exciting. And that is the ability to run Java 21 on AWS Lambda. Yes, so soon after Java 21 became available to use, you can now deploy applications to Lambda using Java 21 as a managed runtime. And in this video, you're gonna learn just how quickly you can get started using Java 21, using Lambda, and using the AWS serverless application model with this lovely cute mascot. Let's get into it. Over 70% of you listening to this video aren't actually yet subscribed. And if you do scroll down and hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell, I promise to you Java developers out there that I will keep producing content that is meaningful for you. And that means I want you to reach out. I want you to comment below. I want you to tell me the kind of things that you're interested in and the kind of content that you want to see. And I promise you, if you subscribe, if you comment, I will produce the content that you want to see. Thank you all for listening. Now let's get back to the video. So to get started with Java on Lambda, you're going to need to make sure you've got the latest version of the SAM CLI installed. If I run a SAM version command, as of right now, that is version 1.103. A great milestone for SAM recently, at least 1.100, woohoo. And then if you run a SAM init command, this allows you to initialize a brand new project. And we want to use a quick start template. And for the purposes of this example, let's just use the simple hello world example. We don't want to use the most popular runtime, Python. Yeah. Um, and then when you get this list here, you see that there is now an option available for Java 21, number eight. You can see it just about right there. So if I type eight here, I can then run through and initialize a new SAM project using Java 21. I want to package by application up as a zip file. I'm going to use Maven as my dependency manager. Um, let's not enable X-ray tracing. Let's not enable application insights. Ooh, structured logging, new Lambda features. Yay. Let's enable them. Let's give this application a name. Let's call it Java on Lambda. And Sam's now going to download a sample project and initialize that on my local file system. And I can then CD into my Java on Lambda folder. And you see, I've got some files here ready to go. Let's jump over to IntelliJ now to actually have a look at what that initialized. Okay, so if you open up that folder in IntelliJ, you'll see you've got a few different things going on here. The first is this template.yaml file. This is the actual Sam template that's used to define your application. And you see it looks a little bit like cloud formation. It is really cloud formation just with a few handy little helpers on top of that. Things like being able to just to map up your API endpoint, map up the path, and Sam will handle all of the creation of API gateway, of the permissions, of all that integration glue stuff. Sam does that on your behalf. While you're in this template.yaml file, there's a couple of things you're going to want to change here. The first is to set the memory size to 2 or 48 megabytes. That's 2 gigabytes of memory for your Lambda function. Now, typically with Java, 2 gigabytes of memory is about the sweet spot. I'd always recommend starting there and then optimizing out from there if you need to. The other thing you'll notice is that the runtime is Java 21. Wow, Java 21 on Lambda, lovely. Um, so then once you've got that, you'll see that you've also got your actual application code. So you'll see this template here is simply specifying this code URI property. This is the folder that actually contains your Java application. And we've got that here. You've got your hello world function, obviously at the root of that, you've got your pom.xml that has all your, your Maven dependencies. And then you've got your source folder. And if we follow that all the way down, eventually you'll end up at this app class. Now, this is the actual class that contains all of your actual Lambda application code. And you'll notice the first thing that you'll see is that this class implements this request handler object. And this is actually an object that comes from the Lambda runtime package. If you go back to your pom.xml, you see you've got this AWS Lambda Java core object. That is where that request handler comes from. And this is a class that's going to be a request handler for an API gateway proxy request, and it's gonna return an API gateway proxy response. Them API gateway objects come from another dependency, which is this AWS Lambda Java events dependency. Of course, if you're doing with this SAM, this is all built in. And then you've actually got this handle request method. This is the method that's actually going to be invoked when your Lambda function gets called. And if you jump back to your SAM template, you'll see that actually your handler here is your hello world and your app class. And then you've got the handle request method that's actually being called. 
And in here, you see there's just some kind of pretty basic application code. This is a hello world example. After all, it makes a query to check ip.amazonaws.com. It sets up a JSON string that includes a message of hello world, and then it passes in the IP address that has just been retrieved from that check ip.amazonaws.com. And then finally, it builds a response, an API gateway response event with a status code of 200 and with that body that you've just constructed. Of course, if there's any kind of exception, that response is built slightly differently with the body being empty and the status code of 500. Nice and simple, right? If you jump back to your terminal window now, we can actually roll this application out. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to run a sam build command, and I'm actually going to specify this use container flag, and this will actually compile my Java application inside a running Docker container, and that just makes sure that I've got the all the tooling I need, everything I need to kind of compile this this application. This will take a couple of seconds to compile. So if I just snap my fingers and that has now completed successfully. And then you see that the sam build command gives me even the commands that I need to actually deploy that function. So if I run sam deploy and the guided flag, and I also need to pass in my CLI profile, sam will then give you a wonderful little wizard to actually deploy this application. So what do you want to call your CloudFormation stack? Java on Lambda. Let's roll this out to EU West 1. Then there's a bunch of different questions here. Do you want to confirm the changes before you deploy them? Do you want to allow Sam to create IAM roles? Do you want to disable rollback? This is a really cool one. If you define an API endpoint that doesn't have any authentication, Sam will ask you if that's okay. Of course it is. And then you do want to save your arguments to a configuration file just so you don't need to walk through this wizard every single time. And now Sam's going to go off. You'll see it's already uploaded my application bundle into S3, and it's going to come off and actually create me a CloudFormation change set. I can then approve that change set. Remember, I said that I want to see these changes before I deploy them. Hit yes, and this is then going to use CloudFormation to roll out the changes to your application. Now, once that's finished, you'll get this big list of CloudFormation things that happened, all the different things that were created and updated. And then finally, you'll get your actual API endpoint output in the outputs there. And I'm just going to hit that API endpoint in my browser. And that responded reasonably quickly, considering this is just pure Java 21 on Lambda, albeit that this function isn't actually doing an awful lot. And that's it. You now have Java 21 running on Lambda. It's as simple as that. Now, what if you're using Java on Lambda already and you want to start enabling Snapstar? You want to improve the performance of your Java applications on Lambda. And you can do all of that using AWS SAM as well. If you come back into IntelliJ and come back to your template.yaml, you can actually turn on Snapstar. And there's a couple of things you need to do here. The first is you need to specify the Snapstar property. And then under there, you need to say apply on and then published versions. This is this tells Lambda to apply Snapstart for all of the newly published versions of your application. And this is a really, really critical thing to understand with Snapstart. Snapstart only actually applies on versions of your application. So to use Snapstart with Lambda and Java, you need to be using the aliases and versions feature of Lambda. Now I've got another video on this channel that goes deeper into how you can use aliases versions. I will link to that in the description below. But for the purposes of this conversation, just know that when you enable Snapstart, you also need to specify the auto publish alias property. And let's set that to prod for the purposes of this. And now Sam will handle all of the different things you need to do around aliases and versions. It will create the alias. It will create the new version of your application. It will apply Snapstar, and it will also map up API Gateway to that alias of your Lambda function. And that is so important to remember if you're using Java and Lambda. And once you've done that, you've added them three lines of YAML to your template file. If you come back to your terminal and run a build again, that will complete really, really quickly because... Because you've used a container, Sam knows that your actual application hasn't changed. It's just your template that has changed. That build completes really quickly. And then you can just run that Sam deploy command again, this time not including the guided flag because you've already been through that wizard once and you saved all of them arguments to that config file. So now you can just run a Sam deploy. Now, when you run a deployment with Snapstar, it does take a few minutes for all the snapshots to be taken, the cache to be populated. So I'm going to hit yes on that CloudFormation change set confirmation, and then I'm going to come back in just a moment once this is finished deploying. I'll see you then. And that has completed. It took about 
two minutes or so to complete. So not a huge amount of time, but it will be longer than if you're just using standard deploys and not using Snapstart. And then of course, I can just hit that API endpoint again and my API will respond. And this is now a Snapstart enabled Lambda function. Of course, this is now warm. So it responds incredibly, incredibly quickly. And actually that is all there is to running Java 21 on Lambda. It is as simple as that. You can get started with SAM. If you're already using Java 17, you can just upgrade to Java 21 and start realizing the benefits right now, today on Lambda, Java 21. Go do. I'll see you all next time.